Welcome. Glad you're here today. Hope everybody made out all right in the storm, and we welcome those that are joining us online and by phone today. We're glad you guys can be with us. And if you're listening out there, please let us know you're listening. Uh, Facebook us, Twitter us, I don't know if tweet us, <laughs> or send us an email or something like that. Uh, okay, so I want to do a survey today just to see how many people are bad with directions. Anybody? Okay, you're raising your hand. Some people are getting nudged, going, hey, raise your hand. I know you are. Okay, <laughs> Good, you're in good company because I am one of those people. In fact, I had an opportunity this week. I think Pat Langley, are you here today? Are you, Pat? He's here somewhere. There he is right there. <laughs> I don't know how I overlooked you. Anyway, Pat had surgery this past week, and we're so glad that he could be with us. He had some stents put in, and uh, he's doing well. And I was going out to Pat's house to visit him. <laughs> okay, you already know where it's going, I see. <laughs> So I'm coming, and, and as usual, a lot of times I don't think about, I just think about, hey, it's about here, I'll be okay, I'll figure it out. And then I realize, no, I don't really know where it's at at all. <laughs> and I have GPS, but some of these rural houses, especially new ones that are being built, the GPS doesn't work for them. It's like the road doesn't show up or it shows you some other place in North Carolina or, you know, just pick some odd location. So I call him and say, hey, Pat, I need to know how to get to your house. So he gives me directions. He's a very detailed guy, but he's very precise about saying, hey, you turn here, you do this, you do that, look for this landmark. And uh, in my mind goes, you know, I'm ADD, so I'm like, I I didn't focus on most of them. I'm just like, hey, turn right somewhere. And so, <laughs> and all I knew was Millfield Road, if you know the Millfield Road. So I turn on Millfield Road, and then I realize this is taking way too long. I've been on Millfield for like five minutes. <laughs> this can't be right. And uh, so I call him, and I realize I went the wrong way. I should have turned right instead of left. And um, anyway, so I called him back, and, and he said, okay. So I didn't want to tell him that I actually went past his house again, and I came back, and I finally got to Pat's house, and we had a great visit. <laughs> and that would be a funny story. or that, You know, it is funny, but that's not really the funny part. The funny part is I've actually been to Pat's house <laughs> before. <laughs> I'm bad with directions. Uh, and uh, <laughs> every family vacation we've ever been on, including the one we just went to. Um, in fact, here's a picture of us on our last family vacation. If you, uh, <laughs> That's us. And it's a dirt road. And we're going, is really? I mean, is, is SeaWorld on this dirt road? I mean, this is the kind of stuff that happens to us. But here's what I know. I, I really think God, I'm going to teach you something spiritual today about this. I think that God pairs people on purpose. And in fact, I want to make it part of my pre-marriage counseling. So some of you that are, going, that are planning on going through that, I just want to make this part of it. Not spiritually, but geographically, that God pairs people that are lost people to people that are unlost people. And I think that's the way it works. So, so you should never, you should always have somebody. Like my wife is pretty good with directions. She can't read a map, but she is pretty good with directions. And uh, I am not. And so a lot of times you'll see her driving, and that's the reason. Uh, so be paired with somebody that is unlost to help you get there. But, uh, but, but there's three things that I wrote down, and I, and I just want to share them because I, I really thought about this. And I said, you know what? I want to share three things that maybe you people that are good with directions don't know about us people that get lost, okay? So, so here's a couple things you wouldn't even know. Number one, we don't get lost on purpose, okay? I mean, so <laughs> I just want you to know that. It wasn't my intention to get lost. I mean, we really mean well, but sometimes I don't know how it happens, but, but it happens. Okay, number two is while you're getting lost, you don't know you're getting lost, okay? There's a confidence. Even when I was driving down Millfield, I'm like, I'm in the right place. I'm on the right road. I'm doing the right thing. So you don't know you're getting lost while you're doing And the last one is this, and maybe you need to write this one down. Whatever road you're on determines where you'll end up. Okay, I don't see anybody writing it down. <laughs> you're going, duh, right? I mean, anybody think that's a new one, right? I mean, that's the law of the path, okay? The law of the path says this, that direction determines destination, okay? Direction determines destination, and you're still going, wow, that's not, okay, let me say it a different way. Direction, not intentions, determines destination. Have you heard that one before? And, and, and we understand that, right, when it, when it relates to this, and going to Florida, I'm, I'm bad with directions, but I get this one, okay? From my house to get to Florida, you go 58, take, take a right on 58, and take a left on, on 95 all the way to Florida south, Okay? But no matter how much I pack my car, I think you'll get this one, right? If I get a sunscreen, which we had because we're going to Clearwater Beach, you get it? if I get my tickets to SeaWorld and Busch Gardens Tampa and all these things, if I get all that stuff and we pack it all in the car and we're all good to go, but I head north, doesn't matter what my intentions are, right? I'll never make it to Florida. You get it? Because direction determines destination. Direction, not intentions, not my hopes, not what I wish, 
Not what I believe determines where I'll end up. Do you agree with that? And so, 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 but as a pastor, here's what I see, and this is why I'm excited about this series. I, I want to say from the start, I got most of this material from a book called The Principle of the Path by um, Andy Stanley. I recommend the book. And when you read the book, you're going to go, wait a minute, you're, you're teaching kind of just what he did. And I go, yeah, because he said it so well. And if you listen to his messages on it, you're going to hear that I'm using a lot of his material. And by the way, I've heard this message before. Pastor Jim Wall at Community Church at Western Branch preached a series similar to this. It's not about being original, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, what I see is, because most of us geographically are going, okay, this is going to be one of these messages that are kind of like, duh, <laughs> right? I mean, nobody thinks you're going to get to Florida by going north, Right? But let me tell you where the disconnect comes for most of us, if not all of us. I think we, all of us do this from time to time. In our lives, right? In other areas of our lives. We don't realize sometimes that the law of the path relates to other areas of our lives, in our marriages, right? In our dating, in our health, in our relationships, in our finances, in our work. In every area of the, in our lives, the law of the path applies. But the disconnect is that sometimes we think because we have good intentions... Because we wished upon a star, sorry, I've been in Disney World. <laughs> you get it? Because we wished upon a star that, that somehow, because we have good intentions, we can be on the wrong path and somehow it's going to work out. But it won't. Because every path has a destination and, and the path is, the, the destination is determined by the direction. Does that make sense? So we're going to get into it today. Over the next five weeks, we're going to take a look at it. But today, we're going to focus on something, and we're going to be focusing on the book of Proverbs during this series. And today, we're, we're taking a look at Solomon. And what he's about to do in this passage we're going to look at today in Proverbs chapter 7 is this. He is going to bring out, um, he, he's bringing together, uh, like basically he's talking to his son. But he's bringing us into the discussion like he's talking to somebody with advice to go, hey, I've got some experience, I want to pass this on to you, and I'm going to share a little story with you that might have some meaning, and then I'm going to bring you back into the story. You get that picture? And that's what he's going to do. So here we go. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1. My son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and to insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with, the, with seductive words. So basically here he's saying, hey, look, pay attention to what I'm about to say because I'm about to impart some wisdom on you. Okay, now he's going to set the story up. Okay, so verse 6. At the window of my house, I look down through the lattice. Um, so, so basically, here's what he's about to do. He's saying, all right, I'm looking through a window, and what I'm about to see, what he's about to describe, is like watching a train wreck, okay? It's like watching a wreck. It's like, have you ever had that time where you were watching somebody, or like a toddler, or a teenager, <laughs> where you're watching them, and you're going, this isn't going to go well. I can already see what's about to occur, and you're like, ooh. I know what's going to happen. You get it? And that's what he's doing. He's going, my vantage point is from this window, but what I'm seeing happen down here is going to be like a wreck. You get it? I see it coming. So here we go. You ready? Verse 7. I saw the simple. I noticed among the young men a youth who had no sense. <laughs> we stop there for a second. <laughs> a youth who had no sense. Who would think? Right? I mean, wait, What? No, because youth, if you're, if you're a young person in the room, please don't leave. <laughs> You'll know who you are. But, but here's the thing. If you're a youth, you have no sense. Or in another place it says has no judgment. Why? It's not, it's not an insult. It's just saying, hey, you haven't had the time or the experience of life. And a lot of times you balk at your parents because they're trying to impart some of their judgment, right? Not judgmentalness, although sometimes that's true too, right? But, but some of their judgment or some of their time and experience, they're going, hey, oh, you don't want to do that, you know? What are you doing to me, you're right? But you don't have any sense, and, and, and you're going, well, maybe I don't have any sense, but, but look what you're wearing. <laughs> Anybody ever? <laughs> you know, they're looking at your parents going, wow, I'm going to take advice from somebody that looks like that, you know? But they have some time and some wisdom to impart to go, I can see where this path is going. You get the picture? And here it comes. Verse 8. He was going down the street near her, her corner, walking along the direction of her house. At twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. 
uh, you, you, you kind of see where this is going, right? Do you guys get the picture? <laughs> and, and the young man is walking, and he's looking, and, it, and it's set in the mood, and he's kind of hearing his soundtrack playing in the background. And depending on your age or your genre, you might be hearing different songs here, you know? For, for the people that, that are young like myself, then you might be hearing, you know, I'm going to get lucky. You know the song? <laughs> Tonight I'm going to get lucky. You know, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, there's a song out right now. It's the number one on the chart. It's called uh, Get Lucky. And, and, and that's what he's hearing in his mind. He's going, Tonight I'm getting lucky. You know, she's there. We're going to have some fun. And it's going to be luck tonight. You get it? Not to be too graphic, but that's it. But, okay, so some of you older people are not laughing because you're going, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Party like a rock star. Some of you are thinking that's a new song. It's not. It's getting older, right? Party like a rock star. You get it tonight. I'm gonna party like a rock. Okay, maybe that's too too young for you. Uh, born to be wild. Okay. <laughs> you feeling it now? Okay. You get your motor running. You get it. Okay. So now you're getting it. All right. I see what crowd I got. Good night. <laughs> Forget the lucky thing. Got it. All right. Born to be wild. Okay. Let's go back in time a little bit. But that's the music he's hearing, right? What happens when you hear that music? It's like okay. It's going to go. That's the soundtrack I'm here. This is going to be an incredible night. You get it? We're going to have some experience. I'm going to have some stories to tell. It's going to be awesome. You get it? But the old man, the old man watching from the window, Solomon, is hearing a different soundtrack. You want to know what he's hearing? Dun, dun. <laughs> you get it? He's hearing the soundtrack to Jaws. You are blood in the water. I know what's going to happen. I've seen this story. You get it? Because to the young man, this is an event. Okay? It's an event. It's just an event. It's just a, it's just a happy time. We're going to share some stories, and it's great. But to the old man, this is a path that has a very predictable destination. See it? Verse 10. Then out came the woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute. Now, she's not a prostitute. She's dressed like a prostitute. Get and with crafty intent. <laughs> she is unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the streets, now in the square, at the corner she lurks. <laughs> she took hold of him and kissed him with a brazen face, she said. Now this next part may not make as much sense. I think you could follow up till now what's going on here. And some of you guys are going, wow, this is, you know, who wouldn't enjoy this part? But now the next part might be a little confusing, but I want to explain it because it's important. Today I fulfilled my vows and I have food from my fellowship offering at home. Okay, <laughs> What, what does that mean, right? I mean, whatever. This must be some kind of ancient, weird stuff. But, but it's not. Okay, so I have food. What she's saying is, is I'm not a prostitute. I'm doing this because this is fun. I have money. I have food. I have stuff. We're going to have a good time tonight. You get the idea? And, but I have come from the temple. I have fulfilled my vows. What does that mean? You want to know what it means? It means I have been to the temple. I have offered the animal sacrifice from the Old Testament to say I have offered to get all my sins forgiven and my cup is empty. You get the picture? And tonight, I'm going to fill this cup back up. You get it? <laughs> this is what it means. And some of you, come, we, we all come from different uh, religious backgrounds, right? Some of us are Catholic, so you get it. You have kind of a more sophisticated way of, of asking for forgiveness, right? Hmm? <laughs> you go to the priest, right, and you confess your sins. And now my cup's empty, right? And I can go back out and fill it up. And us Protestants, we're all being kind of sanctified here. No, we don't do that. But we do, right? I mean, it's one of those things where we don't even have to have a priest, right? We just say, God, forgive me, and he forgives us, and he takes a big eraser, and he erases all of our sins. You know, doesn't it say that in 1 John 1, 9? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and that's true. But some of us have learned it to be, well, God is so stupid, isn't he? And he doesn't even remember our sins, is what we think. And we go, and we go. so now I have emptied my cup, and I'm ready to fill it up again, and I'm ready to work the system. You get it? Yeah. We're going to have a great time tonight. That's where this is going. You get it? Verse 15. So I came out to meet, this is the lady talking, okay? I came out, so I came out, she's going to say three, three times this, and I want you to pay attention. So I came out to meet you. You get it? I looked for you, <laughs> and it found you. See what she's doing? She came out. I, I'm special. You get it? I'm, this is awesome. She, she likes me. She's paying attention to me. She's doing all these things for me. She's, well, let's see what else she did. Verse 16. I have covered my bed with colored linen from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us drink deeply of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. 
to a young man, guys in the room, right? This is amazing. Some of you are sitting by your night wives, so you're going, I'm, no, I'm too sanctified to realize this part of the story. But he's going, this is awesome. She likes me. This is going to be amazing. And here, here we go. My husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. And the young guy's going, yeah, well, I kind of assumed that. I mean, you know, what are you telling me? Something I don't know. Verse 20, he took his purse. Okay, <laughs> What? <laughs> Now maybe we're seeing what the problem in the marriage is, right? I mean, he's got a purse. What's up? I'm kidding. His man bag. Okay. You that carry man bags, you know who you are. <laughs> All right. Filled with money, and he, he will be gone until the full moon, okay? Um, what does that mean? He's going to be gone a long time. Hey, hey, look in the refrigerator. I got, I got eggs. You, know? <laughs> you, you can stay. We can have breakfast. This is going to be a great time, and we don't have to rush, and we can take our times, and it's going to be awesome. In verse 21, with persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her. You get it? <laughs> Hey, I, I'm a celebrity. You get it? I, I'm being treated like a celebrity. When we walk in the club with this lady, all eyes on us. You get it? <laughs> you know the feeling? That's the soundtrack he's hearing, right? Huh? All eyes on us. You know, that's, that, yeah. We're going to party tonight when we party together. You get it? And that's, what, that's what's happening here. You get it? And then, and then all of a sudden the story kind of takes a strange turn. All at once he followed her like an ox to the slaughter. Wait a minute, that's not, <laughs> that's not a slur. And a young man, you can hear him already. It's like he's in the story, and he's getting set up, and he's looking back at the narrator going, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> not like an ox to the slaughter, right? You don't hear the soundtrack that I'm hearing. It's not like an ox to the slaughter. It, it's, it's me and you partying together. You get it? That's, that's not this. Well, let me go further than the narrator, see? Like a deer stepping into a noose. Till an arrow pierces his liver. That's disgusting. Like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. And you can hear the young man already saying, I'm sorry, this is just a date, man. This is just an event. This is not a big deal. This is just for fun. What are you talking about? And the old man is saying, no, this is a path. You see, you are focused on what you're doing. But I'm focused on where this is going. You see? You see? You are focused on the here and now, but I'm focused on the future. And you're missing, you're missing this guy. That this isn't just an event. This isn't just a one-time thing. This isn't just a fun event that you're going to laugh about later with your friends. This is a path that's going to lead to death. Verse 24. Now then, my son, listen to me. Pay attention to what I'm saying. You see what Solomon is doing here? Now he's, he's bringing us back into the picture. He's going, wait a minute, ladies, I, I know you're mad. You're going, oh, look at her. She's so terrible. She's awful. Look how she's dressed. <laughs> and the guys are going, well, this is kind of a neat story, you know. But he's bringing you back into the story to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't think this is about them, however you think about them, okay? Because... I want to bring you back into it because I'm going to, I've got some lessons for us, not just them. Okay, verse 25. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray into her paths. You see it? The young man is saying, this isn't a path. It is. Verse 26. Many. Can I, can I say it again? Many. Many are the victims she has brought down. This ain't unique, man. You, you see, you thought this was special, didn't you? You thought you were special. You thought this was your story and it's your moment. And he's saying, no, 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 no. Many. This ain't unique. There's a lot of people here. Many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Not thong, okay, throng, <laughs> throng. Some of you guys mind, I'm trying to bring you back in, okay, throng. What are we saying? Lots of people have done this. This is common. This is commonplace. This isn't anything special. This story has played out time after time after time. And in case we're thinking it's just in our lifetime, 
This story was written 3,000 years ago. Okay? What happened then happens now. There, what does Solomon say? There's nothing new under the sun. You think you're special? You're not special. You're like an ox to the slaughter. You're like a deer. Just like they're walking around unaware that this thing has happened several times. This is going to kill you. You get it? Verse 27. Her house is like a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. (laughs) Wow. Her house is a highway. You getting it? (laughs) This ain't unique. This isn't a little excursion journey off on the side. You are on a freeway that is crowded. You get it? During rush hour. You think you're unique. It is broad. People are all people. A lot of people have been down this one. You're not new. This isn't new. (laughs) You can almost hear a different sound track, right? I'm on a highway to... You want to say it? Until we realize it's really serious, don't we? Because, why? I mean, he said it that way, right? You're on a highway to the grave leading down to its chambers. (laughs) This is the way of death. This is the way of hell. You get it? (laughs) And we think it's so unique with us. And it's one of the reasons why maybe you've experienced this, where you've had a counselor, you've had a person that had some insight about your life, and you sit down as a couple or you sit down with other people, and you start to tell them your story, and they kind of finish. It's like you tell them that, and they say, I bet you felt like this. And you go, everybody's going, wow, you must be a prophet. <laughs> and the person sitting there is going, I'm not a prophet, right? I've only heard this story a thousand times. You think it's unique. It's not. But you see the problem? By the way, that's the last verse here. <laughs> kind of depressing it. But you want to know what the problem is? The problem is is that we think because our intentions, our wishes, or whatever, we think it'll all work out. Isn't that right? It's true. I'd like to point out today just a couple of disconnects. You know, as a pastor, I see some of these. And, and, and today, I, these aren't my, this is not my list, so don't get mad at me. I, I borrowed it from somebody else, and you can, you can get mad at me later. I'm not picking on you. Because a lot of people are going to find yourself here. And if you do, here's what I want to be careful of in this series. This is not about guilt. This is not about saying you're trapped where you are. It's simply pointing out that you're on a path. Maybe you need to consider where it's going. That this is not just a limited event. So here we go. You ready? Here's, here's the intent. I'm going to read the intent. And then here's the path that the person has taken. And see if, see if there's a disconnect. I believe there is. The first one is this. I, I want to have a great Christian guy, okay? So I will go out with anybody that's cute. You get it? <laughs> I found him in a bar, you know? And now we're going to have a good Christian relationship, right? Is that a good path? You get it? it happens to <laughs> I want our family to be a unit. So I'm going to spend, I want a family to be a unit. I want us to be tight. I want us, in the end, to really be close-knit and have this family dynamic, and, and we can go on family vacations, and we can have a great time together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend every waking hour working, okay? I, I'm going to try to afford a lifestyle that we can't afford, so I'm going to put everything I got into this. Is that going to add up? <laughs> I don't spend any time with my family. You get it? Can I tell you? Path trumps intention every time. <laughs> it's predictable. It's a predictable path. You get it? I, I want respect of my children and my grandchildren. So I'll fool around on their mother. You get it? I, I want to be the patriarch. I want to be the person everybody respects. But I'm going to do this thing. Is that, does that work? It's a path with the same destination. It's a highway. You get it? I, mean, I can do that. It's not a big deal. It's just, a, it's just an event. It's no big deal. I can make up for this. But the point of the story is this, is that it's a, it's a highway, man. <laughs> With a very predictable destination. I, I want to grow old and invest in my grandchildren. So I will neglect my health. Okay. I, I, I want to lose weight. So supersize that. <laughs> uh, I've tried that one. <laughs> or here's one, okay? Just so we know. It's, the, it's not your intentions. It's not your hopes. It's not your dreams. not your beliefs. It's not your prayer. 
And I want to be careful how I said this. I didn't want to say this one at the beginning because you could very easily think that prayer doesn't change things. It does. But it depends on the prayer. But here's the prayer I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> God, make this Big Mac. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? God, make this French fry into a carrot stick on the way down. <laughs> huh? No. I've tried it. It doesn't work. You see? <laughs> I tell you, it doesn't work. And our numbers show it. Why? Because it doesn't work. Because he's saying it's a law of the path. Can, can he intervene? Of course. But it's the exception, not the rule. And what's happening is, is people are going, no, 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 no. I'm following God, and I'm praying a prayer, or I'm going to a conference, or I'm doing a meeting, or I'm doing whatever else it is that I think I'm going to do, and it's going to trump the path that I'm on. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. I want to know God. I want to know God. I want to have joy in my life. So here's what I'm going to do. I will wake up every morning and read the newspaper. Hmm? I wake up every morning and watch the news. The first thing I'm going to do is turn on the television. Hmm? It's not working, is it? I, I want to have an incredible sex life in my marriage. So I'll practice with everyone I date. Hmm? <laughs> we laugh. We laugh, but some of us are getting to be this age, and we go ask a 50-year-old and say, how did that work? When you sleep with everyone, did it make your marriage better? And is there forgiveness and there's a restoration? There is. But ask someone that's been down the path and see where it leads. I want to have a great relationship with my future spouse, so we'll move in together. I want to be careful with that. And I understand some of us are struggling with that. And believe me when I say I am not picking on you other than to say be careful the path that you're going down. And yes, there's ways to correct that. And we have a lot of people that are living that way. And the culture is just that. And I get it. But understand it is a path. It's not just what the Bible says. You see? Yeah, I know the Bible says but. Do you get it? Be careful with that. Here's one. I want to break addictions. Drugs, alcohol, pornography. I've had this problem for years. I can do it through my own self-discipline. I don't need other people. I don't need accountability. I don't need AA. I don't need NA. I don't need an accountability partner. I don't need Weight Watchers. You, you, you getting a picture? It doesn't work. I want financial security, so I'll take on more debt. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to talk to anyone about my finances, you get it? I, I've been raised that I keep all that to myself, and it keeps getting worse and worse, but I think if I keep trying to do the same thing I'm doing a little bit better, it's going to get better, but it doesn't, right? And we're wondering... Why do I keep it to myself? And I have this lotto, or I have this lotto mentality that with my finances, somehow it's going to all work out if I win the lottery. And what I'd ask you to do is, is look up the people who have won the lottery. We actually have one here at the church, and he can tell you. I won't point him out, but he told me I could say it, and if anybody wants to ever talk to him about what it was like to win the lotto, you get it? Lotto thinking that somewhere over the rainbow... Sorry, Jimmy the Cricket, you know. <laughs> but I'm sorry, your wishes and your intentions and everything you want doesn't trump the path that you're on. You get it? It's the way it works for all of us. So here's what I want to ask you a question today. Think, think about your paths. Are they getting you to where you want to go? Okay. Are they getting you to where you want to go? And the reason we're enamored by the wrong path, maybe you've been wondering, why are we enamored by it? I've been thinking about it myself. And I'll tell you what it is. It's the emotional appeal. There's something or someone on that path. There's something or someone on that path that has an emotional appeal to us. Not irrational. It's not rational. It's emotional. You get it? And there's an immediacy to it. We get fixated on the immediate and we don't think about the ultimate <laughs> because we're rushed, because we have to do it now. And we don't have time to think about where this is going. You get it? And any time that's where you're at, any time you've made decisions that way, trust me, <laughs> this is coming from the old men. You get it? 
Anytime you make a decision like that, I can almost guarantee you it's the wrong one. (laughs) Solomon said it right. Don't let her steal your heart. Don't let her steal your heart. Wrong paths because of emotional appeal. And I can tell you, some of us have had people warning us, don't we? The mom. Mamas, right? Trust God, trust your mom. <laughs> Mama's looking out the lattice <laughs> or the window. They don't just look out the window, do they? They throw the window up. They saw it. Hey, don't be doing that. You know? And you can hear your mama's voice in the background. You're going, hey, yeah, yeah, you don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> but someone has warned us, right? And I, and I got to tell you, this isn't about throwing a guilt trip at us. It's about us seeing. It's about us opening up our eyes. You want to know why? Because this is the reason why it's not guilt. This is not a judgmental message. Maybe it comes across that way. I don't know. I hope it doesn't. And I'm okay if I offend you and it hurts you and makes you better. I'm good with that. But, but here's what I know. A lot of us have been going down the path for a while, haven't we? And we're starting to reap some of the results, and we're going, why did this happen to me? How did this happen? God, I thought I trusted in you. God, I thought this was this, but I'm doing this, and I'm hoping that, I, you know, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. And then when it doesn't, we get brokenhearted. Is that right? We see it all the time. We talk to people all the time. I'm brokenhearted that this is where the path led me, and then I become angry at God. Some people, I become angry at myself. And in this message series, we're going to talk some about what do we do with that? What do we do with that? How do, how do we get beyond that? How do we make a course correction right here? We can. There's hope. This is not a message series without hope, okay? That's not what this is about. It's not to beat you up to go, you went down the wrong path, and now you're going to reap this, and that's all you can do. That's not at all what we're here to say today. We're here to say this, is that, but, but we can't figure it out on our own. Have you figured that out yet? That you can't do this alone? Maybe you've been doing that long enough. Maybe that's the reason why you came here today, looking for hope, and now I just offended you. <laughs> huh? But you know it, and the reason, and you've got to think about it for a minute, is it me, or is it what you're hearing to go, I don't like what you're saying. I don't want to let other people in. And there's a pride that we hang on to that says, I can do this on my own. But there is a God that says, will you trust me? Because I love you. I'm not here to beat you up. I'm not here to say there's no second chance. Jesus Christ died on the cross for such a reason, to make a course correction. But there is a piece to this that I want you to see. If you're here today and you don't know him, maybe that's why God sent you here today, to get to know his one and only son. But it requires two things. Confession, to say, I'm a sinner. You're right. I've messed up my life, and I turn myself to the Christ to say, I need your forgiveness, God, because I can't fix this on my own. I can't do this by myself. That's confession. But I will tell you what the church preaches. And to me, it may not be heresy. I think it is. Because it is devastating our lives. We stop at confession. And we forget repentance. Repentance sounds like such a religious word. It sounds so judgmental to use the word repentance, doesn't it? And all it means is this. I was going, and I do this all the time, I repent when I'm driving. <laughs> because at one point, going to Florida, I was going north on 95. <laughs> and no matter how much my intentions were, my wife was like, are you crazy? <laughs> I'm like, it's getting late. <laughs> But I could be stubborn, and I could say, I don't need to listen to that. I can get to Florida from here. We're going to go around the Arctic. (laughs) 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 Or I could be sensible, and I could come back to my senses, and I could hear and change directions and go south. You get the picture? And as silly as that sounds, driving, can I tell you, some of us are doing this with our lives And we need to confess to God, maybe you have done that, maybe you haven't. If you don't, then that's the place to start. Know that God loves you right where you are. And too much to leave you there. He wants to put you on a different path. You get it? He wants to change your paths and make them straight. We're going to talk about that. You get it? That's what God wants. And he can do it and he can change your life and it doesn't happen overnight. You get it? 
trust God. And then the other thing I see is this. Someone, I have a feeling, is saying, I see your path, and it's dangerous. Maybe they've been telling you that. And you've been either angry at them, or you've just been ignoring them. Like, like a lot of men, we just ignore it, right? We don't get mad about it. We just go, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mama. Got it. See ya. Get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Frenchie. Got it. Okay. I got this one. Okay. And you can tell when you're looking at them, it just goes right over their head. You're going, wow, I see a train wreck. And the question today is this, will we listen? Will we listen? Or will we blow them off? Will we think we're smarter? You know what I'm talking about? I hear what you're saying, but I'm smarter. I'm the one who's going to be able to break through this. It's going to be okay. Sorry, I got it. I can do this and it'll be all right. It's not a big deal. Got it. (laughs) Somehow I can avoid it. Somehow I can break it, but I can tell you it won't work that way. Because it is a law. It's like the law of gravity. Don't think of it like a a, a law we make in the country where it changes. It's a law that God has made, like gravity, that says if you go on this path, you will will end up wherever this path leads. You get it? (laughs) And you can't break it any more than you can break gravity. Try it. (laughs) Try it small first. You know, try it here, not up there. Some of us are climbing to the pinnacles and going, I don't believe in gravity. You very quickly will. doesn't matter if you believe in it. It's a law. You get it? And the law of the path is true. Your path will make you or break you. You get it? It will bless you or curse you. And some of us, I don't want to make this a negative thing. It's not a negative thing. Some of you have come here and you've started to get it straight, haven't you? You've started to change your life. You're not perfect. But you've started to reap some of the rewards for walking down the right path. And I'm not saying every time you walk down a path it's going to be easy. Any Christian say that? No. But it reaps rewards as we do that. Some of us have seen it in our marriages, haven't it? As we started to change or we've been to counseling or we've really put forth an effort and we really started to invest in our lives or we've come here and we said, hey, you know what? My life has been immoral and I'm starting to live a more moral way. And I understand it doesn't happen overnight. Try it. You know, we're not here to say change your whole life overnight. It doesn't work like that. Nobody thinks it does. But start to change. You get it? And we started to change directions, and we started to reap some of the rewards, right? Some of us in the financial field has done that, right? You're living smaller. You're living by your means. You're you're cutting up your credit cards, right? You're living differently. And, and, And the results are you're starting to get financial freedom in your life. And it's amazing, and it's starting to snowball. Can I tell you? That's how it works. When you start to go down the path, the closer you get and the more it snowballs, the more you're like, wow, this is amazing. We see it in all kinds of areas of our life, spiritually, and and the byproduct is joy. Can I tell you, direction determines destination. Direction determines destination. Direction, not intentions, determines destination. So the two questions I got for you today is this, what but before we close today, here's what I want you to do. Maybe you need to pray about this. Maybe you need to go home and examine some of this to go, what path am I on? What paths are you on? Where is it leading you? Where, where is the path that you're on leading you? And I want you to pray just today. We're going to come back and talk about all kinds of other things in this series. It's going to be awesome, and, and I hope it's life-changing. But just for this today and this week, what I want you to do is this. I want you to think about what path am I on, and do I need to make a course correction? I tell you, God wants you to be able to do that. He's not here to beat you up. He's not here to throw a bunch of judgment at you and to hurt you and to guilt trip you. Read John 3.16 and John 3.17, and you will see that he loves you enough that he's already paid the price to his son. But what he's asking you today is this. Hey, I love you. Now, will you trust me? And will you make the course correction in some places in your life? (laughs) What would happen if we did? What would happen if we did? I hope you'll come back next week as we go on this journey together. It could be amazing. But for now, do you need to make any course corrections? (laughs) Let's stand for prayer. Father, we come before you today. And Lord, um, I think we all stand, and I have a feeling there's some people in the room that think that they've been centered out, but they weren't. Because Lord, the truth is, is that we all have paths that we go down. We all have things that we need to change direction. We, we, were, on the, we were going the right direction, and somehow we, we turned off course. 
Somehow when we got back on the interstate, we ended up the wrong way. I get it. Done it. God, I just pray today, God, that, that we'll let that break through. That, that we'll stop being so stubborn. That we'll stop being like hearing people, everybody saying, everybody saying it to us and we're ignoring it. Everybody's saying, yeah, that's going to work out. And you go, no, no, it's going to work out for me. I'm going to be different. And, and, and we're on a highway, God. I pray today we change directions because of Jesus Christ. Through the power of Christ today, I pray that directions will start to change. That, that today we'll just identify it. And through this series, Lord, we'll change directions in, in certain areas of our life. Together. Because that's how you made it, God. None of us have it all. As I looked at this material, Lord, you know I even had a hard time presenting it because some of the things on the list were things about me. <laughs> so, God, I understand that, Lord, none of us are perfect. And we all have room for improvement, and we all need to get our feet going in the right direction. And I pray for the one that needs hope today. I pray this over them today. That, Lord, they don't let the pain of realizing this. They don't start making the excuses to go, but well, you don't know why I'm on this path, and you don't know what this is, and... But I pray that today, Lord, they'll look up and go, okay, God, what do you want me to do? And today in their heart, something will change. And it will set them on a new path that leads to the way you want us to live and the joy that only you can give and a life that's fulfilling. I pray for the one that doesn't know you, Lord, maybe that's the starting block. Maybe, maybe before they can even change course directions, they've got to know you. And I pray today, Lord, they'll ask you into their life. For all of us, God, set us on the direction you want. Help us help keep our paths straight, Lord. And we pray you receive all the honor and the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.